Hello and welcome to the Cinematic Attic YouTube channel. Let's take a look at what items I've picked up recently. So yesterday, actually, I got my halfway to Black Friday sale package from Vinegar Syndrome, my favorite company. And you know, waiting for any package from Vinegar Syndrome is like waiting for Christmas morning. Um, but those sale packages are especially maddening. Um, but when you do get those packages, opening them up, there's a little something like this. So yeah, um, but here's what I got. I ordered 20 items. The box only had 19 items, <laughs> so I had to email Vinegar Syndrome, and, and they are super uh, helpful, super responsive. Um, they are going to send the missing item with my next shipment, which uh, should be coming hopefully um, not too long from now, and that's okay. Um, so here's what I got, though. Uh, first up, a couple things from uh, AGFA that um, I was interested in. Not new releases, but I picked up the Scare Film Archives Volume 1, Drug Stories. Uh, I love um, those kind of institutional films made to educate people, and this is full of all those uh, drugs are bad films. So... Uh, really enjoy that. And got the blood rama triple feature, Triple Frightmare. Has three films on it. Uh, Help Me, I'm Possessed, Night of the Strangler, and Carnival of Blood. Next, some of the new releases. VSA, Expect No Mercy. Uh, this is one that I'd actually been interested in, in seeing. So, uh, well-timed item for them to put out. Uh, the other VSA, Red Surf. And I picked that up because it will actually upgrade a VHS. Then um, I got scared to death, um, and it will also upgrade a VHS, this old media tape right here. I picked up the new 4K of Miami Connection. Um, I've seen this before, never owned it, so I figured I would grab it. And, of course, I could not pass this up. This is one of my uh, favorite films. Thriller, Cruel, pic uh, Cruel Picture, 4K. You get two cuts of the film. Um, I'm sure you've all seen this on YouTube a million times. But I could not pass this up. Wonderful box edition. Um, more about this later. Um, I've been uh, obsessed with uh, shot on video movies lately 80s and 90s shot on video films so Saturn's core has suddenly become my favorite uh, partner label <laughs> I picked up um, five things actually I would have gotten six things but one of those was, was the one that was missing um, with their partners only month uh, sale I ordered a few more so those are on the way but we start with Mail Order Murder, the story of Wave Productions, um, who uh, are a distributor, uh, actually a um, creator of Shot on Video Films. This is a documentary about them, <clears throat> and it's fabulous. I now want to see all of these movies. <laughs> uh, but this comes with a bonus movie, Wave of Terror, so wonderful. Um, as far as other... Wave production shot on video movies. One of them is Sorority Slaughter. And this also comes with the sequel as a bonus, which is a bonus. Um, 
other shot on video movies I picked up burglar from hell and this also has a bonus movie on it previously unreleased bonus movie and I really like the uh, basic artwork <laughs> the old original artwork it's so fun and uh, wave productions same kind of thing very simple Savage Harvest and Sinister and I can't wait to watch all of those picked up some older uh, Vinegar Syndrome releases um, couple here that had been recommended numerous times uh, so I picked up shot and sudden fury also I saw this one was getting uh, really low in numbers and it was really cheap so I picked up massage parlor murders got punk vacation because it was cheap and uh, what kind of sold it for me is there's a bonus movie on here too, uh, Nomad Riders. And finally uh, some of their old DVD uh, uh, releases because they were super cheap. Runaway Nightmare, Flesh and Bullets, and the Mothers, Serial Santiago film. So as far as other things I picked up from other labels, I actually got my first indicator release, if you can believe that. Um, Mad Dog Morgan. This will uh, replace an old full screen DVD of mine. But these indicator releases are amazing. Um, you get a, a book, a poster, a film. And about 8,000 special features. <laughs> I was recently going through my Something Weird DVDs uh, because I noticed one of them, the, the print of the film on the DVD, was full screen when I knew the original was not the original aspect ratio was widescreen. So I, I checked through all my Something Weird uh, discs and I found several films that um, are presented in full screen when they're not or they shouldn't be. Um, so I, I went on a tear to replace all those. I just had to. So I ordered a couple from Agfa. Uh, actually I actually ordered these from Amazon because um, I, think, I think it was when the site was down before the sale I'm not sure. Anyway, so uh, Agfa partnered with something weird. I got She Freak with its proper aspect ratio and God Monster of Indian Flats. And what was great about this one is it comes with a bonus movie also called The Legend of Bigfoot 1975, which happens to be a film that I really like. And this will also uh, replace. Um, a full screen copy of that movie I have on a Mill Creek box. Um, so, win win all the way around. And um, I saw that um, a few of the Herschel Gordon Lewis movies in my Something Weird collection were um, not in the right aspect ratio. I went uh, on Amazon to try to replace those, and it turned out to be actually cheaper. To just get the 14 film box set <laughs> from Arrow, the Feast box, 14 Herschel Gordon Lewis movies. This has been out a while. It originally came out, I think, in a huge edition. But uh, it was just cheaper to get the box, so I did. So uh, no problem there. Replacing another. Uh, full screen terrible print on a Mill Creek box the new Grindhouse releasing Death Game 
Um, I have seen the, the remake called Knock Knock, and it kind of made me want to go revisit this old film. Haven't watched it yet, but uh, plan to, obviously. Death Game. Couple from Kino Lorber. Replacing a full screen DVD, we have Treasure of the Four Crowns. And this is a 3D. You can watch it in 3D on here. There's uh, 3D glasses included and all that fun stuff. And, of course, could not pass up another, yet another, uh, Film Noir The Dark Side of Cinema box set. This is number seven. Three films in here, which include The Boss, 1956. Chicago Confidential, with a great cover, 1957. And The Fear Makers, from 1958. Now, the odd thing about this box set is that you have blue case, blue case, clear case. <laughs> you know, not that I care really, but that just seems a little odd. Not very, not very uniform in the, in the box set. I, I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe they ran out of a certain kind of case. And finally, I went to Second and Charles. They're having a um, buy two get two free sale on used discs. Uh, not having a lot of money because I bought all this other stuff. Um, I bought two and got two free. So for about ten bucks, I got four films. I found the um, a Blue Underground DVD of Contraband, a Lucio Fulci film that was pretty cool. Early Nicholas Winding Refn film, Fear X. I watched this not too long ago and thought it was pretty good. And I got the uh, Anchor Bay DVDs of House and House 2. Not to be confused with the Japanese movie House that I talked about in the last episode. House and House 2. And these will actually upgrade my Anchor Bay VHS of House and House 2. Here's everything else I picked up. Dollar Tree movies. Went to two stores. Here's what I got. And that will eliminate these VHS. Went to three more Dollar Trees and only found these. And this one will upgrade this VHS. Went to a new thrift store. Only picked up these cheap DVDs. And three of them will upgrade VHS. Went to a yard sale where all I picked up was this Ultimate Collector's Edition of Casablanca. I uh, didn't really need the movie. I, of course, have it on DVD. But um, this uh, collector set, which came out quite a while ago, I think around 2008, um, I checked Amazon. It goes for like 50 bucks. And I got it for five. And it's uh, like new. Couldn't pass it up because it has so much crazy stuff in it. First of all, there's a three disc edition of the film. discs in here. So many extra features and documentaries and other things which did not have. You get a hardback photo book get a pouch full of lots of uh, art cards and other associated items and you even get 
some other strange things, <laughs> including this uh, wallet type object and this uh, what luggage tag or something. <laughs> so um, yeah, I couldn't pass that up for five bucks. That's quite the ultimate edition. Got a bunch of free movies from somebody who was getting rid of their collection. A lot of kids stuff. But it was free. So I took it. And with those, these two VHS can go away. Went to a thrift store. Found some $1 DVDs. This one is actually from Olive, so that's cool. And they will upgrade these to VHS. Got a few DVDs from an antique mall. VHS for deletion. Okay, so for this episode's entries into the Pantheon, that being my favorite movies of all time, um, I have two titles. One of them we just saw earlier in the video. Thriller, A Cruel Picture. Um, this one I had owned for quite a while on this Synapse DVD. And um, most of the time when I have a movie like this on DVD that's perfectly fine, I don't pay the big bucks to upgrade, but this being one of my favorite movies, one of my Pantheon films, had to do it, especially with all the special features and different cuts and things you get of the film. Uh, this film, for those of you who don't know, is um, your, your <laughs> definition of a grindhouse revenge film. Um, all sorts of craziness you have. The, uh, the uh, girl, the shotgun and an eye patch going out against the people who wronged her. I mean, that's all you really need to know. Um, this is a, um, a Swedish film starring Christina, Lind Christina Lindbergh. Uh, I've seen some of her other films. This is a great addition. It's a great film. I saw this a long time ago. I picked this DVD up at a Borders way back when. Borders uh, at one time, at least the one that I went to, had this small section uh, just labeled Cult Cinema. And that's always the section I went right to, and it had all sorts of things like like this there. I don't know what else I can possibly say about this movie. It is a bleak movie. Um, <laughs> uh, her character is initially um, kind of kidnapped uh, by this guy who, who hooks her on drugs and forces her to do all sorts of uh, things she doesn't want to do. Um, every point in the movie where there's some glimmer of of hope or um you know being reunited with their family ends up not being so bright <laughs> so she goes to write her own happy ending so to speak with uh the eye patch and shotgun <laughs> it's it's great um this is you know textbook grindhouse thriller a cruel picture 1973 just yeah. Next is... Uh, next is a film that I've loved for a very long time. It's from 1968. It's Candy. This is a film essentially about a young girl who more or less wanders through a bunch of strange encounters with a lot of strange people. It's a satire... It's a comedy. It's bizarre. Um, <laughs> this movie... Well, first let me tell you. It stars a lot of people you've heard of. You may not have heard of this movie. I know if you're watching this channel, you may have. Uh, but if, if you've never heard of this movie, it stars Marlon Brando, uh, Ringo Starr, Walter Matthau, John Huston, J. 
James Coburn, Richard Burton, um, John Aston, Sugar Ray Robinson, <laughs> um, a a bunch of people, an all star cast really. It is a surreal '60s uh, psychedelic bit of craziness. Um, not the usual thing that draws me in, uh, but it works for this. It's kind of a mesmerizing movie. <laughs> you have no idea where it's going to go. <laughs> I would say it's fourth wall breaking, but it's kind of a bit more than that, really. And I'm, I'm talking about the scene where she's um, walking through the field, um, kind of the um, the scene with the, the ending music where you see um, <laughs> without giving things away kind of a revisitation of what she's been through um, this film I first kind of saw <laughs> when I was young like um, I don't know uh, I would say junior high or something like that still living at home Still had a, 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 a bedtime, a time I had to be in bed. This was played on a late night movie um, program. Looking back, I recognize now that they were playing cult films. I know one of the other films they played at some point was El Topo, which I did not watch at that time, but watched later. They showed this movie on late night TV, like, um, I don't know, like an uh, 11.30, 12.30, probably 12.30 time slot. And I started watching it. And it was one of the most bizarre brain trips of a film I'd ever seen at that point in my life. <laughs> I kept, um, like, turning the TV off and pretending to go to bed just to make sure I wasn't trouble and then sneaking back out turning the TV back on and then repeating that and at one point um, I don't know if I got in trouble or if I just gave up but I never saw the ending of the movie and at that time this movie was not readily available this movie wasn't available at all because I checked my Leonard Malton guide um, because um, I had one even back then. And this movie was not listed as being out on video at all. So I was kind of heartbroken that I was not able to see this film. Or finish the film. Because I can't stand not finishing a film. I'm not someone who will ever walk out of a movie. That doesn't make any logical sense to me. Um, and I can't leave any movie unfinished. But then um, in... Let's see. What was it? 19... Or no, 2001, I guess. Anchor Bay put it out on VHS. Widescreen, even. I saw this in a catalog, and I had to order it. And I was so thrilled to finally own this movie, to be able to finally finish this movie. And uh, I did, and I've watched it many times. It's one of the go-to movies. Um, if I start showing other people films, obscure films or weird films that they've never seen or heard of. And um, then um, a few years back, Kino Lorber put it out on Blu-ray. Of course, I had to grab it. And uh, so this is how I've watched it for years. And I'm keeping this because it's an Anchor Bay, first of all. Um, But, candy. If you've never seen this and you want a mind trip, there you go. So that'll do it for this episode of The Cinematic Attic. Until next time, enjoy your movies.